Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen in a magnificent castle. And the lightning strike burned away the rest. I don't remember what it said. I forgot about my lamp. It got cut out of the movie. It's like the building block of Cheese Bridge was just miles of wire. I'm Keith McQueen, current head of Model Shop, and I'm standing in Leica Archives today. We're gonna to talk about some of the past films and how we start these movies with some look development and line language. Okay, the world of Paranorman. Every object, every set, there's not a single straight line in this movie, and there are very few parallel lines. The challenge of that becomes dealing with real world physics and trying to make something not look like a mistake but in fact look like a conscious choice that ties the entire world together. We started with Norman's living room as the first set where we were sort of trying to develop this language for the film. Norman, didn't I tell you to take out the garbage? Yeah, coming, Dad. The first several objects that we had to build, one of which was the television. So you can see in the initial artwork, the outside lines of the box are not parallel. There are a lot of thick to thin tapering elements, both in the base. You can see this in the top. There's like a thick to thin. The top is offset from the actual box of the television. What you see here is the general shape, which really helped to solidify the look of the room and also the world in general. One thing you may not know is there's an actual screen inside of this that was used during the filming of the movie, and we're gonna to try to turn this on with our fancy uh, high-tech film tool. Still works. How about that? Paranorman playing on the Paranorman TV. What's happening now? Well, the zombie is eating her head, Grandma. That's not very nice. One of the really great things about being in the archives, this is a board getting prepared to go out for public display, whether a tour or going to a museum. You're seeing just a collection of props from Paranorman uh, and just continuing with the line language that we talked about uh, with the TV, you can start to see this in everyday objects. So moving into the chair, there's again, uh, no parallel lines. There's a lot of thick, thin, this leg clearly thicker than this one. It's torqued compared to the back leg. So this becomes a common feature that you can start to see. If you were to take any of these props off and put them into our world or even uh, the world of any of our other movies, they would stand out immediately. But on this board, everything sort of starts to cohesively fall together. There's a bit of uh, almost an Escher quality to some of these drawings that we have to sort of bridge uh, from capturing the feel of the look from the art director or the illustrator into reality. So this object actually can exist on a real world set made with real materials. So we are looking at Norman's book. This is a really good example of the scale of a lot of these objects needing to change depending on which particular character is touching or interacting with them. <laughs> along with the different scale. There's not a single parallel line anywhere on the book. The edges sort of warble a little bit. For the most part, you can still see a lot of the line language uh, carried through to the overall shape of this book. One of the challenges that we have here is animatable paper in puppet scale. <laughs> It's aluminum foil. The aluminum foil allows the animator to very precisely control the movement. The foil will hold its shape as the animator is manipulating the page. And some of those sequences, we still have not rivaled in terms of the volume of moving paper in a film. Everybody's favorite vending machine.
a really great example of, uh, again, combination, uh, the line language that we're seeing here, not a parallel line. You can see this bulge. Uh, you can see the whole thing sort of listing and uh, tipping off to the side. The buttons, the square panel, nothing is straight. Everything sort of has a thick to thin element. And then it's filled with individual treats, which also are uh, not square. They are not parallel. So there's a lot of funny jokes in here that uh, sometimes are hard to see, but somebody had a lot of fun coming up with the names to all these snacks. Something to think about too, clearly all of these candy wrappers, irregular, and what happens to them after the occupants of this world eat this candy? Uh, it turns into trash. And so you see an example here of debris and litter that was dressed into a lot of the street scenes. All of this stuff needs to be thought about, designed, and made by a person to feel like it is from the world of Paranorman. We're going to take a look at some of the line language and shapes of box trolls. What we are seeing here are examples of actually how we started box trolls. A lot of the design language for box trolls was inspired by these illustrations or this type of illustration from a couple of the illustrators. This line work early on became something that we were really focusing on and attempting to replicate some of these very simplistic drawings and capturing the irregular feel of the line work, the slumping sort of worn out feel of the city and how everything sort of was like leaning up against objects or buildings next to each other. And one of the interesting things that we stumbled onto pretty quickly was actually attempting to replicate this line work with wire. And we started applying wire to the edges of literally everything in this movie. So all buildings, the props, uh, you can see here, there's a little bit of a wandering physical wire that was glued to the outer edge. In the model shop, we had a line of people standing to use a 120 year old anvil to hammer this wire into shape to apply to every square inch of this movie. This very quickly became one of the design features that uh, helped us to determine the shape of all of these objects. Physical wire. Lock your windows, bolt your doors, hide anything that is not bolted down, hide your cheese. A good example of uh, an early look development piece that was part of Snatcher's factory. So this was the oven in the back of the building. You can see it in the movie, but this was a smaller scale version trying to capture the feel of this illustration uh, and how that translates into a three-dimensional object. So um, the balance, uh, trying to capture this, uh, the, the large grate in the center um, and matching some of the detail and uh, the line quality, but translate that into a three-dimensional object. Similar to Paranorman in, in a way, while there were straight lines, they were not super common. Um, there was a lot, I think, of emphasis put on everything being very used and worn and sort of collapsing a little bit on itself, as opposed to sort of non-parallel straight lines in relation to themselves. It was more a wear uh, issue where things were just sort of like beginning to decline and deteriorate. And that sort of drove uh, more than on Paranorman, the fact that we were just avoiding straight lines. It just sort of naturally fell that way when trying to imitate the line work and the deterioration of Cheese Bridge. You, you, you take an individual object uh, alone on a table, um, separate, it, it's very weird and stands out and feels 
wrong, but you get an entire collection of pieces with similar design elements, in this case the wire, the slumpiness of everything, and it all starts to feel cohesive again uh, and from the same world. And you can see that absolutely with the truck. Um, that, you know, there's an overall balance of shapes, uh, and while this might feel weird when it's gray on a black background, when you start to put this together with the real object and the color and the wear of box trolls uh, in general and cheese bridge, a lot of the line work, um, everything starts to cohesively tie together and feel correct, even though uh, it realistically would never exist in the real world. This thing would collapse probably under its own weight. It probably, I don't even know if you could steer the thing, but um, it's believable. It feels correct in this environment with the surrounding of all of these props and the buildings. That's it from the archives. I've had a great time uh, looking and uh, remembering things that I haven't thought about in a long time. Uh, so keep an eye out the next time you watch the movie for some of these details and you'll start to see them everywhere. And don't forget to like and subscribe.